In this video, we are gonna take some time to review some basic geometry principles that we see very often in civil engineering. So um, when we think of geometry, we of course think of shapes and measurements. Now, in general, we deal with one-dimensional measurements, 1D measurements, which is basically just length, okay? We also have 2D types of measurements, which are areas, okay? So we think of length and area. And then, of course, if we extend it into three-dimensional, 3D, we think of volume, okay? So let's talk about each one of these very briefly. Let's start with length. Okay. Length. So in terms of geometric measurements, we think of length in terms of a perimeter. So a perimeter is a continuous length enclosing a geometric figure. So uh, we've learned, you know, studied perimeter for a long time. Now, if you have a, a circular segment um, or a whole circle, you know, an entire circle, the distance around the circle is still its perimeter, but it's given a special name called circumference. So a Circumference is the perimeter for a circle and is the distance around a circle. So when we, when we hear circumference, um, a lot of people don't realize it, but it's just a perimeter. A circumference is just a perimeter, but for a circle. Now, what if you have a segment of the circle, right? So um, if you have a segment of a circle, which is a curved uh, portion of a circle, but not the entire circle, we would call that the arc length of a circle. So an arc length, of a circle is a portion of the circle's circumference. All right, so let's review real quickly. Um, for a circle, for circles, Circumference is typically denoted by C, and that's equal to what? Well, that's equal to 2 pi times a radius. So if you have a circle like this and you have its radius here, this distance around the circle is the circumference, or in other words, it's the perimeter of the circle, and that's equal to 2 pi times the radius. Now, we can also say since, uh, since diameter is equal to two times, um, not two times pi, <laughs> since diameter is equal to two times a radius, right? So this, this right here, this whole thing right here across the circle is the diameter. Since the diameter is two times the radius, we can also write circumference is equal to pi times diameter, right? Because you have two times r here, that gives you the diameter. So we have two expressions for the circumference of an entire circle. Now, what about a segment of the circle? What about an arc length, okay? So let's consider a segment of a circle for a circular arc. we may have something like this. We have two radii here. We have a radius here and a radius here, okay? And we'll have some kind of angle in between here called theta, 
and the arc length, again, it's, it's the measurement of a segment of this circle. So it's a segment of this curved portion that's defined by two radius measurements and an, a central angle theta in between those radius measurements. So we would call this length right here the arc length an arc length of the circle, okay? And so we typically use the letter S for arc length, okay? So how do you calculate a segment of a circle? How do you calculate that, that arc length? Well, we would say S equals two pi R times theta over 360 degrees. If theta has units of degrees, okay? And we can also say S equals 2 pi R times theta over 2 pi if theta has units of radians. So uh, for theta having units of radians, we see that we can cancel the 2 pi and we can have another version of the formula as uh, R theta if theta has units of radians, okay? And we also need to recall that 180 degrees is equal to pi radians. And also 360 degrees is equal to two pi radians. So if you remember, uh, radians is another unit of measurement for, for an angle. You have degrees and radians. So again, this goes back to high school geometry. You should be familiar with this. Okay. So that's length um, slash perimeter in a nutshell. So that's, a, again, a one dimensional um, unit of, of measurement in terms of a distance. Okay. So what about area? Let's talk about area next. Okay. Area is two-dimensional, okay? Area is two-dimensional. So you would have some kind of enclosed uh, shape that has an area of something, okay? So area has units of length squared, okay? So when you have uh, area, you're looking at inches squared, feet squared, meters squared, whatever, okay? So let's talk about formulas for uh, areas of common shapes, okay? So let's look at uh, rectangles. Rectangles. So a rectangle is, um, is a shape that all corners are at 90 degrees, of course. All of these are 90 degree corners. And uh, you would have a length let's call it L, and we would have a width, let's call it B. So the area enclosed here is equal to L times B, length times width, okay? Now, a square is a special uh, case of a rectangle. Square is a special case of a Rectangle. So all all squares are rectangles. They're just a special case of a rectangle where the length equals the width. So for a square, you would have um, maybe L by L, okay? And then the area of a square is just L squared. Now, sometimes we call that side. We call it S for side. So you sometimes say it's side squared. So it, it doesn't really matter what you call this thing as long as it's, you know, the, the two different dimensions are the, uh, the same. They're equal to one another, okay? What about triangles? A triangle. So typically you have a... When you have a triangle, your triangle has a height, H, and it has a base of B. And so to get this area of a triangle, you say area is one-half base times height, okay? What about a circle? Well, we already uh, talked about a circle in terms of perimeter, but what about area? 
So again, for a circle, if you want its area, area is uh, the enclosed two-dimensional space within the circle. So the area of that circle is given as pi r squared, and of course r here is your radius, okay? Now, uh, begin because we can write um, the radius is the diameter divided by two. Remember, this whole thing is is diameter, and so radius radius is diameter divided by two. We can substitute uh, this in to this radius term, and we can say area is also pi times the quantity d over two squared. Now, when you square that fraction d over two, what do you get? You get pi d squared over four. And so we actually use this uh, as our formula for the area of a circle more often than pi r squared, because in engineering, it's easier to measure a diameter than it is a, um, a radius. So pi d squared over, over four, and again, the d gets squared and the two in the denominator gets squared. That's where the four comes from. And then we also have a trapezoid, okay? So a trapezoid is, um, it's like a combination of a rectangle and either one or two triangles. So a trapezoid looks kind of like this, and you have two bases usually. You have a, a B1, a base one, and then you have a base two, call it B2. And then there's usually a height of the trapezoid, h. And so we say the area, the enclosed area of a trapezoid is equal to one half base one plus base two times the height, okay? And again, uh, all of these should be um, review from high school. There's, there's really nothing new here. So the last geometric um, uh, set of, of uh, properties we're going to, talk about is volume, okay? Volume. Again, volume is three-dimensional. Um, volume, I typically use a V with a slash through it. Volume, uh, like this, and volume has units of length cubed, okay? And so what are some common three-dimensional uh, volumetric shapes that we um uh, deal with? Well, one of them is a cylinder. Cylinder. So what does a cylinder look like? Well, a cylinder, I'm going to try to draw this in 3D. A cylinder looks kind of like this, maybe like a, a soda can. Looks something like this. And a cylinder is going to have a height, H, and if you look down on a cylinder, this is going to be a 3D view. If you look down on a cylinder, what do you see? Well, you see a circular shape. Okay, so this is what we call a top view. So this is kind of like if you, if you are hovering up here and you look down on a cylinder, what do you see? You see a circular shape. And in that circle, you're going to have a radius. Okay. And so how do you get the volume? How do you get the three-dimensional space inside this cylinder? Well, it turns out that volume of a cylinder is equal to the area of its cross-section times the height. Well, when we say cross-section, what we mean is if you, pat, if you cut a plane through this cylinder and you opened it up, what would you see? You would see this area of a circle. So, so what you would have here is pi r squared times its height, okay? And because we also know that a circle, a circular area um, is also pi d squared over 4, we could also say volume of a cylinder is pi d squared over 4 times its height, okay? So uh, there's your volume of a cylinder. What about uh, like a box shape? Well, uh, the official mathematical name is called a right angle parallelopiped. Yes, and that's a real word, <laughs> right angle parallelopiped. So this is like a 3D box. 
So um, in 3D, a 3D view of one of these is your classic box like this. It looks something like this. Okay. Now, this is your 3D view. It's going to have a height of H, and then it's going to have a width B and a length L. So this is our length, this is our width, and this is our height. So what is our, um, our volume of this? Well, again, we can do the same thing that we did with a circle. We can look at a top view. We can look at a top view, and what do we see if we draw a top view? Well, we see a rectangle, right, with dimensions B and L, okay? And so what would the volume of this be? Well, again, its volume is equal to the area of the cross-section times the height. Well, in this case, what's the cross-section? Well, it's, it's this rectangular area here, this rectangular area. So it would be b times l times the height okay and so again you more commonly see this as length times width times height all right and that's the volume of a right angled parallelopiped which is essentially a box okay what about a right triangle prism right triangle prism so again, this is a 3D shape, and it's pretty much like a right triangle, but with uh, a height. So let's go ahead and draw this. I'm gonna try to draw this in 3D. And do a little better job. So we have a right angle here, and then we have this height that goes down. Okay, and um, this is going to have a dimension L, and this is going to be a dimension B, and then we have a height dimension here, H, okay? And so when we uh, try to find this, I know this is not my best artwork. <laughs> I'm not, this is why I'm not an artist. So uh, this is a 3D view, a very bad 3D view. And then if you look at a top view, what do you see? Well, you see a right triangle like this with length L and base dimension B. And so what would the volume of this right triangular prism be? Well, it's the area of a triangle, one half base times uh, the length of the triangle times its total height. So again, we can get uh, BLH over two as the volume of this right triangular prism. And then our last 3D shape that we commonly see is a sphere, all right? So this is just a three-dimensional ball, right? So I'm gonna try to draw this in 3D. Okay, a 3D ball, and a sphere has a radius, and so the volume of a sphere is gonna be four-thirds pi times the radius cubed, okay? So again, all of these three-dimensional shapes you have seen them before. This all goes back to high school. So if you're a little rusty on this, you need to uh, take some time and review it on your own. And that's going to conclude our uh, brief summary of, of our uh, geometry topic.